So, say I give you a coordinate and I ask you for trig ratios. The very first thing you want to do is draw the coordinate. Because all we have is x and y. We don't have the radius, do we? So the only trig ratios we could actually answer right now are tan and cotan. Because tan is y over x and cotan is x over y. But if I ask for sine, cosine, cosecant, or secant, I can't give any answers. So the very first thing you want to do is draw it. So I'm at negative 2 and negative 6. And I always draw my point um, connecting with 0, 0 and the x-axis. So it always does bow tie. Piece of that bow tie like we did before. It always goes like this. And then we label it. This is negative 2. This is negative 6. Radius will always be positive because radius is a length and lengths are positive. Okay? So your x and your y values could be negative or positive, but your radius will always be positive. How do you assume, how do you suppose, not assume, how do you suppose we could solve for the radius? We know two sides on a right angle triangle. How can we solve for the third side? Yes, Pythagorean theorem. So it would be x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So we're going to get negative 2 squared plus negative 6 squared equals r squared. And we get 4 plus 36 equals r squared. And then we get 40 equals r squared. And then we take the square root. When we take the square root, we have to remember to do what? Plus or minus. And in this case, because it's an r, it's always going to be plus. Now we have to reduce our radical if we can. Square root of 40, what can we break it down into? 2 root 10, because you could break it down into 40, 4 times 10. The 4 comes out and becomes a 2. So we're going to get r equals 2 root 10. And now we need to give all the trig ratios. And we're going to need more room, so I'm going to do some of them up here. So, tan is easy. Tan your x box. So what's it going to be? Negative 6 over negative 2, which is 3. It's positive. Why is my answer positive? Because it cast. What's positive in this quadrant? Tan and cotan. So if you're not getting tan and cotan to be positive, you messed up. And if you're not getting the other ones to be negative, you messed up. Right? And then cotan is just going to be what? 1 over 3, negative 2 over negative 6, which is 1 third. Okay, what about sine? Sine what? Your, what do you sign? Your resume. So it's going to be negative 6 over 2 root 10. And then we have to rationalize. What do we multiply by? Root 10. So you're going to get negative 6 root 10 over, what's root 10 times root 10? 10. When you multiply radicals that are the same together, you get the same number. So you're going to get 2 times 10, which is negative 6 root 10 over 20. So we take a 2 out of both, and we're going to get negative 3 root 10 over 10. Can we take it out of the 10 in the radical too because it has its even and stuff? No. Okay. Cosecant theta is resume your. So it's 2 root 10 over negative 6. And then what can I do? Take out a 2. So I'm going to get root 10 over negative 3, or they sometimes write it as negative root 10 over 3. Here, I just started over. Instead of just flipping that one, because that would have been way more work, because you have to rationalize the denominator again, I just went from the original resume, your. 
cos theta is cook extra right so we're get negative 2 over 2 root 10 multiply by root 10 and we get negative 2 root 10 over 20 which is actually just negative root 10 over 10. And then secant is rice extra to root 10 over negative 2. So you'd get root 10 over negative 1 or just negative root 10. Now what's great about these is these are the exact values of it, correct? So do I want any decimals? No. What if it was a numeric response and I asked in the year's 10? You'd have to go one more step further and actually give me a decimal, right? So they could plug it in. But they would often go like in the form um, negative or in the form root a or a root b over c. And what's b? What's the sum of a b c? What's the sum of that? Okay. I want you guys to do this one right here, number two. Forgot to record that. And there's the answer. Thank you, Tim, for all the questions. Yeah, wow. Hold back. Stop it. Don't answer all the questions, Tim. All right. So what happens, that's if you're given a coordinate, you plot the coordinate. We agree? Sometimes, though, you'll be given a trig ratio. So a trig ratio still gives you two parts of the triangle. It's just not always x and y. Okay? This first one? It is. So this one says, given the trig ratios in the quadrant of a particular rotational angle, find all the other trig ratios. Okay? So, we draw ourselves a diagram. It says quadrant one. So we draw ourselves a triangle in quadrant one, making that piece of the bow tie. Now, what, what did they give us? Tan your... Xbox. So this is actually very similar to what we just did, right? Except it was written in a coordinate form. Now they gave us XY, but they wrote it in a trig ratio form. So we have X, which is 5, and Y, which is 4. And we have to find the third side. R squared equals 4 squared plus 5 squared. So it's 16 plus 25. R squared equals 41. And then when you square root, you take the plus or minus. But because it's R, it's always positive. Root 41. I want you, I'm only going to give you two for each of these. I want you to do sine and cos. Why would I, why do you suppose I would pick sine and cos? Because it requires you to rationalize the denominator. And go. So, sign your resume, multiply by root 41, and you get an answer of 4 root 41 over 41. Cook, shh, extra rice. So we get 5 root 41 over 41. Okay. Now, that's the easiest one they could give you. Then they give you ones like this, where they say sine is this fraction, and you find it between 90 and 180. That's still nice, because you know it's in quadrant what? Two. And sine is what? Y over R. So they gave us Y and R this time, and we have to solve for X. Why is it important that we actually draw the diagram? So you know that x is negative. If you don't draw the diagram, you will not know, or you'll forget to go plus or minus, or you won't know which one, and you'll guess. That's a problem. But if you draw the diagram, you know x needs to be negative. So I'm just going to go put a little negative sign in there right away so I don't forget. This is 3. This is root 10. So we're going to do x squared equals r squared minus y squared. Root 10 squared minus y squared x squared equals 10 minus 9, x squared equals 1, 
We take the square root we have to take, plus or minus, and we get x equals negative 1 in this case. I want you to give me cotan and cos. Okay, tan is tan your Xbox, so cotan is Xbox your, so it's going to be negative 1 over 3. And then cook extra rice is negative 1 over root 10, and when I rationalize it, I'm going to get negative root 10 over 10. Okay, this is the one of the harder ones. So it says sine. You do this whenever you see this. You see sine to cos tan, cosecant, secant, cosecant, whatever it may be, of a fraction. And then they give you a quadrant, or they give you tan is less than zero, cos is less than zero, sine is less than zero. Whenever they do that, they're giving you two pieces of information so you can draw the triangle and give another trig ratio. Okay? So this one is tan is greater than zero. Where is tan greater than zero? Where's tan positive? Because remember, greater than zero just means positive. Less than zero just means negative. So tan is positive here and here. This is good. But we have to narrow it down to one of the bow ties. How do you think we could do that? Sine is negative. Sine is negative, yes. So where does it have to be in order for tan to be positive and sine to be negative? Yes. And sine, this is the catch too, the negative signs out front, they could write it like this, sine theta equals 2 over negative 3. People are like, but then it has to be negative. Oh my goodness, it's your resume. Resume can't be negative. What am I going to do? Does the negative have to stay on the bottom? No. Remember negatives, you were taught this when you were little. They could be like this, which is the same as out front, which is the same as... The denominator. You just have to have it in one place. You can't have like two. So you need to know then that this is actually negative two over three. It's your y is negative and your r's. And if you've drawn it, you'll see that. Hey, my y is negative two. It has to be negative. My r is always positive. And my x has to be negative. So I have x squared equals three squared minus negative 2 squared, x squared equals 9 minus 4, x squared equals 5, square root, and we take the plus or minus, and x equals negative root 5. This time I want tan and secant. Pardon? <laughs> tan and secant. Tan your Xbox. Rationalize. So I'm going to get negative or positive 2 root 5 over 5. And then secant. It's opposite of cos. Cos is cook extra rice. This is going to be rice extra. So you're going to get negative 3 root 5 over 5. Instead of doing this last one, I want you to do a different one. This is the one that they kind of often give as a trick. So tan theta equals I'm going to say 2 over 3 and cos theta is less than 0 and I want sine theta and secant
why do you think I, why do you suppose I gave this question? Yeah. Because both of them are negative. So the negative, negative signs actually canceled out. And if you don't draw it, you'll keep the tan to be positive x and positive y, and that answer will be there. Right? So it's tan positive cos negative, so it's in this quadrant. In order to be in this quadrant, tan your x box, this actually has to be negative 2 and negative 3, which canceled off because you don't write negative over negative. They cancel and become positive. Yep. <laughs> so you're going to get r squared equals negative 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. r squared equals 9 plus 4. r squared equals 13 square root plus or minus r equals positive root 13. Sign your resume negative 2 over root 13. When you rationalize that you'll get negative 2 root 13 over 13. And then secant is opposite of cos. Cos is cook extra rice. So this is rice extra. So it's root 13 over negative 3 which they'll probably write as negative root 13 over 3. So that's the one that's like the trick, because if you don't draw it, you won't spot the, that they're both negative. Because in that quadrant, they have to be negative. All right. These ones you've done, you have done before. These ones you have done before. We're just going to go off our unit circle and pull them off. Just keep in mind, you guys, that if it's cosecant of 7 pi over 6, you'll go to 7 pi over 6. You'll take sine and do what? flip the answer. We always flip answers on the outside of the circle. We can flip any of that stuff. Can we flip anything on the inside of the circle? No. On the outside of the unit circle, flip away. Inside of the circle, you can't. So you can flip answers. You cannot flip angles. Outside of the circle is answers. Inside of the circle is angles. Okay? So go to tan pi over 2. So tan and cotan, you can't pull directly off the unit circle, right? We have to do y divided by x. Yes? So more work. But secant, cosecant, cos and sine, you can pull directly off the unit circle. Cos and sine are just x and y. Secant and cosecant are just x and y reciprocated. Okay? So let's go to pi over 2 on our unit circle. Pi over 2 on our unit circle is right here. And on our unit circle, that is, whoa, whoa, that's bad. That's what that is. That looks like a Ferris wheel going through some water. Um, under, underground Ferris wheel. Um, zero, one. So this is going to be tan of pi over 2 is going to be y over x. What happens when you have a zero in the denominator? Yeah, it's undefined. What if you have a zero in the numerator? Then it would be zero. y over x? And your Xbox. Your Xbox. Just tan your Xbox. You're fine. This, that's all you got to do. You're real tanned. Melt it up. Okay. Coke secant of 7 pi over 6. Coke secant goes with what? Coke secant goes with sine because it's opposite. C's and S's, C's and S's. So coke secant goes with sine. So go to sine 7 pi over Verse 6. So y. Go to your own circle at 7 pi over 6. Pull the y off. So go to y at 7 pi over 6. What is it? Negative 1 over 2. So that's sine of 7 pi over 6, which is negative 1 over 2. So what would cosecant be? Negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2. You can flip answers. You cannot flip angles. Negative 300 is coterminal. So what would the co what would the actual principal angle in the unit circle be? Sine of 60. What's sine 60? You're just terminating on the same arm.
glad to, to talk that through with you. <laughs> okay, secant of 60. Secant goes with what? Cos of 60. Cos of 60 is a half. We can flip answers. We cannot flip angles. So secant of 60 would be 2 over 1. Yes. All right. What about cos of 150? Go to 150, take off the, the x part. What is it? Sign of 315. Yes. Negative. Because x is negative there. So it's close negative there. Sign of 315. I know it's going to be negative. Because sign's negative in that quadrant. And it's going to be root 2 over 2 because it's the y. Sign of negative 30. What's that the same as? Sign of what principal angle? 330, because we just get the coterminal, right? At 330, it's going to be negative. Negative what? Negative a half. Tan of 240 is a little harder, correct? We have to do y divided by x. At 240, what's my y? Root 3 over 2 divided by my x, which is? half, and then I flip it, root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1, and then I'm going to get 2 root 3 over 2, which is actually root 3. What's cool about this is you can actually check every single one of these answers. You're getting them in exact values, which you need them to be, so you can check them with your calculator, you cannot answer them with your calculator. So if you went cos 150 and you're putting in degrees, so you'd have to have it in degrees, right? If you went cos of 150, it's going to get you negative 0 0.8660, which negative root 3 over 2 is 0 0.8660. You can actually check every single one of these. If you wanted to put in secant of 60, you'd have to put in 1 over cos of 60, though, right? Remember, if you can't remember how to type them in, you can go to your formula sheet. What happens if there's a squared? You write it like this, cos 225 all squared. What's cos of 225? Negative root 2 over 2. And then we square that. Which you square the negative becomes positive. You square the square root becomes 2. You square the 2 which becomes 4. So your answer is a half. What happens if it's radians? You could look for the radian measure on your formula sheet. Or if you're really super stuck, you could convert to degrees and then look. Now, I want to look at this one here. Cos of negative 2 pi over 3. How could I get the coterminal? Add 2 pi. So you would get negative 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi. So you would get negative 2 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3, which is actually 4 pi over 3, which would be negative a half. Make sense? Okay. 